Good afternoon. I'm sorry I forgot my uniform. I don't know if I'm in trouble for that. Um, I define myself though as an internal student. So, well, when I came to China five years ago, I thought that I could learn Chinese very easily in one or two years. And I was very mistaken. Um, I started five times and I uh, failed five times as well. Um, so <laughs> I tried everything. I tried group classes, individual classes. I uh, asked even my wife to help me. She's Chinese and, and that definitely didn't go very well. So um, I was desperate and I thought, what can I do to actually learn Chinese? until my research in psychology led me into the field of identity psychology. So what is identity for psychologists? Uh, for psychologists, basically, it's multifaceted. We have the concept that it's, mul it's basically in three layers. There's a, a social uh, identity, the um, cultural identity, and the psychological identity. Uh, on my speech, I will focus on the psychological identity. Now, what does actually psychological identity entail? Well, if I ask you, who are you? How do you define yourself? What are you? Those are the most commonplace questions that you can hear. And nonetheless, they are probably one of the most difficult questions in our lives. We are struggling our whole life to actually answer those questions. Now, identity for psychologists is uh, the way that we actually see and understand ourselves in relation with the past, the present, and the future, and the way that we see ourselves as who we are and who we want to be. Now, language is one of the most important features for this identity because uh, language is the way that expresses, that verbalizes, and that creates this way to experience and describe our identity. Now, coming back to me learning Chinese, I understood that in order to learn Chinese, I had to become a Chinese version of myself. I had to actually develop myself being like a Chinese, like feeling a Chinese, uttering these Chinese words and having a thinking um, feeling as a Chinese self. And that's not so easy, right? However, I would like to quote um, now Friedrich Nietzsche, the German philosopher, who said, become who you are. Be the architect of yourself. And I was thinking, as educationalists, maybe we need to think about that and help our students to develop an identity in relationship to the subject, to the language, or maybe even other subjects like mathematics, um, psychology, or history that we are teaching them. Because if you are feeling like a mathematician, you are actually able to learn mathematics much more easily and with much more motivation than if you're just trying to do exercises without actually identifying with what you're actually doing. So, why didn't we integrate that in our curriculum before? I think for uh, the last 200 years, our uh, educational philosophy stems from the Industrial Revolution where we are thinking that we are providing our students with material, with knowledge, with memories, with understanding. However, nowadays, if you really want to obtain knowledge, you, all you have to do is just make a research on the internet, and that's it. We have artificial intelligence very, off, very soon that will provide us with the knowledge. But identifying ourselves with something, with knowledge, with the material that we are actually using is a completely different thing. That belongs to only us. I would like to make a confession at this point too. Um, I love education, but my core identity is actually that of a mental health professional. And I would extend this uh, speech to the implications for mental health. As a um, psychotherapist, I have treated people with many different languages. I speak German, French, and English, and I treat people in all these languages. And I realize that sometimes people are able to speak um, 
they, they are able to speak a language that is, sorry, um, that is related to a certain trauma. And speaking in another language, in another identity, basically will help them overcoming that trauma because it is not related to the language, the identity in which this trauma actually happened. So I've been treating people that actually, I'm jumping a little bit, sorry, um, that have actually had this kind of case. Now, I would like to refer to the case of Anna O, oh, which was treated by Sigmund Freud and Josef Breuer in, 19, in, in 1895, where the, the, this woman actually would not, was not able to speak her mother tongue anymore due to trauma she had suffered in her childhood. However, she was still able to, to speak English, Italian, and French. Using English, Josef Poyer was able to treat her trauma and so that she could find actually the, the uh, German language again. This holds tremendous psychotherapeutic uh, potential. I would like to finish this speech quoting Friedrich Nietzsche again. And he said that most people believe that the most important thing in a tree is the fruit, but actually it is the seed. Now, if we want to grow trees that are high reaching, that are bearing many fruits, we should focus more on the seed that lies within our pupils rather than the fruits they are bearing. Thank you very much.